on the end of the last video, we were getting ready to leave for Huzal Valley for our uh, to the loop trip. I didn't take any video of that. I apologize. Um, so, sorry about that. That's my bad. Um, so, when we got ready to leave, um, Austin, my Cleary guy, was supposed to go on vacation. And we had some super bad thunderstorms coming in Wednesday evening. And I just want to give a shout out on to Austin because he stayed back from his vacation. He got to his vacation about five hours late because he stayed on site to make sure that these cables held. And I'll show you a video of those cables right now. These are the steel cables that Austin stayed around to make sure they stayed in place. These are actually supporting the building in all four corners right now. So when that storm came through, we're talking 25 to 35 mile an hour winds with that storm. And he was worried about these cables failing. So he stayed and made sure these cables stayed in place so our barn didn't fall down. He delayed his vacation by four hours just to make sure his job site was secure. And I want to make sure Cleary knew that. So that was above and beyond, in my opinion. So welcome back. So Austin stayed to make sure those cables stayed in place so our building didn't fall down. And that was above and beyond anything that I ever expected out of Cleary. Um, the more that we're getting into this build, I will say that my uh, Cleary rep made a mistake that maybe held us back a month and a half. But the more we're getting into this build, I'm realizing their subcontractor, the concrete guy, has really been the cause of all of our problems. So I just want to make that clear because I told you I would be 100% honest in this channel and I will be. So I don't think Cleary made a mistake. I think Cleary had a bad subcontractor. And I think they've learned a lot from this. I hope they did because this concrete guy has just, he's put us back so much, it's unreal. So, yeah. I mean, Cleary made a mistake. It was about a month and a half mistake. Six weeks, not a six month. The concrete guy has put us back six months, in my opinion. And so, I just want to bring that to your all's attention because it is what it is, but they need to find another subcontractor, in my opinion. So, moving on. Um, we got our plumbing inspection done. The electrician came out and looked at everything and said, I'm not going in the floor, I'm going to go above. So he was going to let the concrete floor go in. So we're looking on the 22nd. Today is the 13th. So on the 22nd, the concrete guy is supposed to be back, supposed to be back, and start putting in all of our floors. Um, Austin said he's got a lot of grading to do, so because, here we go in my opinion again, I think he brought the foundation way too far out of the ground. He should have sunk it deeper into the ground, in my opinion, because I'll show you in a couple videos, I'll show you what I'm talking about in, in a little bit. So, Austin, my foreman from Cleary, he has just been awesome. He's been, been talking to my subcontractors and working with them greatly. Um, like, like my Cleary rep said, he goes, this is one of the, be the best ones he has in his bunch. And I will admit, Austin from Cleary has done an awesome job. Um, I'll show you some, remember that piece that we didn't know where it was going on the last video? Well, let me show you a picture right here.
Okay, right here, this whole entire panel was that one that was laying in the woods that we couldn't figure out what it was. Well, what they're saying is the wind shear coming in from this corner over here, this will re re support these boards, these two poles from that wind shear. That's the purpose of this structure is it's a truss just for these two poles. So that's where that piece ended up at. So they re that piece was a support for two of the poles to handle the extra load of wind shear. Okay, so they installed that piece. It is now in place. So now the mystery is solved. Okay, we're in the house right now and we're in the belly of the house basically. So let me flip you around so I can show you uh, everything that I've been talking about. All right. The plumbers are done. This is all inspected and ready to go. So, the electrician, like I said, is going above. Okay, now, let me find a spot to put you all. Okay. Okay. Here's the front door. This is a good spot for me to show you this. Okay, right here is the lip of where the concrete's gonna be. Well, down here is the wall and our poles. I sprayed like a U-shape all the way around that, and then I sprayed the line across where the concrete's going, and then I saturated each one of these poles, including the ones outside. And I did this all the way around with the termite uh, sealant. And I will do this again after the house is uh, framed out. So I got a barrier here all the way around. Then I got a barrier on the ledge. And then the poles are treated. This is including the pole barn way out here. All those were treated too. So I'll leave you a, a picture at the very end of what I used. Um, and I'll also leave it in the comments. That way, if you need it too, you can get you uh, some of this chemical. Um, I did it on the weekend when it wasn't going to rain. So it has time to crystallize back up. Um, basically, it's a crystallized product that saturates the wood. And it'll stick to the concrete and give you a barrier of termite protection. So I hope this helps. And back to the video. I just want to let you know that I need more content. I need I need ideas from you all and what you all want to see from me. So in the comments below, just give me give me a thumbs up too. I always want the thumbs up because that helps me with my algorithms with YouTube. And give me ideas on what you all want to see. Waving to the neighbors. So it doesn't look like I'm just sitting in a pole barn by myself. <laughs> so, if you want to see something that I'm not showing you, let me know. That's all I'm asking. Uh, because I'm not perfect, and I need to know what you want to know. So, that's the end of this video. And we'll catch you in the next one. Uh, this one was pretty sh simple, short and sweet, and now I'm going to give you an end-to-end -end view of where we're at the barn dominium, and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great week. As I'm editing this video, I realized something. Um, I want to bring you all up to date. Um, it's been really hot in the Midwest. And when I'm editing these videos, I'm in the back of the RV, and the back of the RV's been getting almost 100 degrees during the day. Uh, we got three AC units running, and some days it gets really hot in that RV. Um, 
the other day it was 105 outside and we got three air conditioners running and the inside temperature was 92 degrees and when I'm editing videos in this it just takes a lot out of me to sit back there and sweat like I'm sweating now uh, to edit these videos and get them out as fast as possible uh, hang in with me I hope you enjoy this stuff um, it's just my computers can't handle the temperatures and sometimes they mess up on me and it's hot okay just want to give you that little note see you soon